Hi there, welcome to Excel Module 2. You can follow along in your book starting on page EX2. I've uploaded a start file to Canvas for you. If you download it and open it up, it will look like this. It'll save you from entering in all of these values. There are a couple of things that I do want to go over from the beginning of this chapter, and um, especially on page EX25 in your paper textbook. We will look at entering column titles that are on two lines. So these cells have column titles that are only on one line, but D3 is going to have one that's on two lines. So to do this, we type in the word hours. Now, if I were to hit enter now, it would take me down to the next cell. So in order to make a break and an enter in the same cell, I have to hold down the Alt key and hit enter, and then I can say work. Now when I hit my Tab key, it will automatically adjust and put those words on two different lines. I'm going to do that for E32, hourly, alt, enter, pay rate. There we go. Now I'm going to skip ahead to EX26, flash fill, and we'll talk about using flash fill. If you notice, the email address fields are left empty, even though the names are running over into them. We'll fix that later. But to add an email address, we can um, use flash fill so that it follows a specific pattern and we don't have to type each one. So for cell B4, I'm going to type in B Altori, or Altor, however you pronounce that, at example.com and hit enter. If you notice, this is the first initial last name of the person in cell A4. I'm going to do the same thing for the next one, L Fox for Linda Fox at example.com. Now that I've done two examples, if I come up to my data tab, and find the flash fill button, I can use that to enter in email addresses with the same pattern. I'm going to highlight B4 through B12, hit flash fill, and it will take that same pattern, first initial, last name, and flash fill it all the way through. This is very handy. I use this a lot. Now, row titles. A13 is going to say totals. A14 is going to say highest. 15 is going to say lowest. Average. Let's go down to our sheet tab and we are going to double click on it and change the name to salary report. Remember, we can also right click and rename on that. Then I'll click off and come back to it, right click on it, choose tab color, and let's choose blue accent one. And we will save our file. Now it's time to do some formulas. This chapter is a lot about formulas. And there's many different ways to enter formulas. So we're going to take a look at those different ways as we go through these. If you find a way that you like better than another, you can use that primarily. But it's good to know at least two different ways to enter in formulas. We'll go over five here today. Let's click on F4. In this method, we will type the formula. I'm going to start with an equal sign because all formulas start with equals. D4 times E4. Notice that the cells that I'm referring to in the formula light up as I do it. You can see what I'm typing here. You can also see it up here in the formula bar. I'll hit enter and it will put in the value. The next method we are going to use is 
entering formulas using point mode. This is a combination of clicking on cells and also a little typing. We will start with the equal sign because all formulas start with equal. 0 0.26 times, which is the asterisk, parenthesis. Now we want F4. So I'm going to click on F4 and it will pop that cell value in. Minus C4. I will click on C4. It puts the cell value in. Times asterisk. 22.16, and let's put our end parentheses and hit enter to complete the formula. Let's go to H4 and type in equals 0 0.055 times, and I'll click on F4 and hit enter. Now I'll select I4 equals beginning parenthesis G4. So I'll click on G4 plus H4 in parentheses divided by, so the slash, F4 and enter. Now I'll type, I'll click on J4. I'll type equals, click on F4 minus, open parenthesis, G4 plus H4 in parenthesis and enter. So now I have all my formulas entered in. When I click on them, notice I see formulas up here at the top. And I didn't say this in chapter one, I don't believe, but I'm, I do need you to know that if you just type in the values that are shown in the picture, Sam will count it wrong and I will count it wrong as well because we are using formulas in these cells. That's because and allow, that allows us to be able to change any of the numbers that are involved in the formula, and the formula automatically calculates the new value. So always when it asks you to put a formula, put a formula. I can check that by holding down my control key and my accent key, and it shows me all the formulas in my spreadsheet, which is great to be able to double check. If I hit control accent again, it will get me back to the normal view of my worksheet. Now, I have all of these formulas here that I'd like to copy on down. So I'm going to select all of them. So I will hover over F4, get the big fat cross, hold my mouse button down, and drag through J4 and release. Now I will grab the fill handle, so skinny cross, hold my mouse button down and drag through J12 and release. That will copy all my formulas. If I flip on my formulas again, control accent, you can see that depending upon which row you're in, the cell values in the formulas change. They are relative to their position in the table. These types of formulas, and I like to call them just regular formulas, the formulas that you normally use in Excel for simple functions um, are relative functions. We'll come back to that later. Now it's time to add some totals. I'm going to click on D13, and we are going to use the auto sum button. So if I click on my home tab in my editing area, there is the option to sum. Remember, it will automatically try to figure out which cells you are trying to sum and pop that number in. If it's correct, you hit enter to accept the formula. F13 through H13, I'll highlight those and also do the same thing with the quick sum, auto sum button. J13 as well, we'll auto sum that. Now let's determine the total tax percentage. 
I'm going to click in cell I12, and I want to copy this formula down into the total row. So I get my fill handle, click and drag, and it copies the formula down. Next, we are going to look at entering a formula using the insert function dialog box. So first, we select the cell to contain the formula, which will be C14. Then, the insert function button is right here in Excel. If I click on it, it's going to give me a list of the most recently used functions. I can choose categories if I need to, but I see the one I need right here on the front, the max. I'm looking for the maximum or the highest value here. I'll click OK, and now it's wanting to know which range I'm using. So I'm using C4 through C12, so I'll alter that, and then click OK, and it'll give me my answer. We've done the highest value. Now we will look at the lowest value. I could enter the formula for the lowest value the same way, but let's look at a different way. This time I'm going to use the sum menu. So. I will click in cell A15 because that's where I want the formula to go. And looking on my Home tab, I'll look at that Quick Sum button, click on the drop-down menu, and pick Minimum or Min for the lowest number. It will then try and detect which, which cells I am calculating. Notice that it selects the one right adjacent to this cell. I don't want that cell, so I need to click and drag through the cells I want, which is C4 through C12. Make sure to double check that. That can be really tricky, and lots of people get that counted wrong in the beginning. I'll hit Enter, and that will bring me down to C16. One other way that you can enter in a formula is using your keyboard. So if I hit equals and start typing the word average, you'll notice it'll give me a list of possible functions to use for average. I want this one, so I'll double click to use it. And then I will highlight C4 through C12. Make sure that you're selecting the right range. And then hit enter, and it will pop my formula in for me. At any point in time, if I need to check a formula, I can double click and it will light up which cells are involved in the formula. Escape is a great way to get out of that. Now let's copy a range of cells across columns to an adjacent range using the fill handle. So in other words, I just wanna copy these three formulas. So I select them, C14 through C16. I hover over the bottom right corner, get my fill handle, hold my mouse button down, and drag across through J16. There's one number that I need to come back and delete right here, the average of the tax percent. This is a mathematically invalid average. So I'll delete that one out. If you want to know more about why that is, you can look on page EX221 in your book. So this is a great place to take a break, and we'll come back in part two.